Hello everyone and welcome to the 2022 Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. We're here for the fourth and final round out at the Shelly Sharp Disc Golf Course in the Vista Del Camino Park. And we've got a battle brewing, KJ Naibo, along with Steve Brinster, who's been holding down the lead for a few rounds now. However, KJ has caught him, and we've got nine holes left to play. Pete still very much in the conversation. We'll see if Shasta can make a charge here late as we're looking at hole 10 playing out to the deep basket here on the north side of the park. Pete with the honors. He sits two back of Brinster, three back of our leader in KJ. Must navigate to the right of that sign you see taped to the tree. Keep in mind, KJ Naibo shot a five under during round number three. And that was enough to get him within a single stroke of Steve Brinster. He currently sits five under through the front nine. Well played shot for Shasta Chris. Oh, and that was heading directly to the OB left side, and you hear the jubilation. It hits a post and stays in bounds. So Brinster with definitely a favorable break here. See if he can take advantage. Shasta throwing a forehand, which we don't see often. He clearly has one. We don't see him go to it too often, though. KJ, who's about 20, maybe 30 feet short of where Brinster ultimately finished. Tight gap. And peers it. Couldn't ask for a better shot as you hear him exhale there. And Brinster with a much more favorable gap. Good line. Looks a little bit light on the standstill approach, but still good line to the pin. He's going to have a look for birdie as well. Now we've seen Pete from Circle's Edge or just outside of it connect on a couple putts today. Can he keep it rolling? Oh, and he thought he had it. It did look good out of his hand. Just a high left side as a sh short downhill putt doesn't drop in for him. Brinster, about the same distance, maybe just a step or two closer. Steve doesn't take advantage. He gets the great break to keep him in bounds. Has a pretty solid approach, but doesn't convert on the short range putt. And KJ's got to be thinking he's getting a little bit of a gift here. He's thrown two beautiful shots to set him up here for the birdie. And he converts. So he'll move to 21 under. And now we'll have a two-stroke lead, which is the biggest lead that he's had. As he's trying to get past Steve Brinster. Came into the round with a one-stroke deficit. Pete now sits four behind the leader. Shasta would have to make some magic happen if he still wants to be a contender here. As we head to 11, 231 meters 
par four. OB on that right-hand side. A couple of mandatory trees on the left-hand side. Then, of course, the sidewalk and beyond is out of bounds on the left. Your second shot is, well, it's completely predicated on what you do on your first. And I know that sounds all too obvious. Like, really, Terry, you throw the second after you throw the first? What I'm saying is you're really limited by what you can do on that second shot. You put yourself in a position like KJ j just did. He can decide how aggressive he does or doesn't want to be. Very much birdie in question. And we see that leak off to the left side. So that's going to be out of bounds for Pete. If you don't bite off enough, there's just really nothing you can do on the second shot to put you in position. And I feel like a lot of people will press on a hole like this, and that's how they get into trouble. All day long, par is perfectly fine. In fact, I just looked. It does play as the third most difficult hole on the course. So if you pick up a par, you're not hurting yourself. In fact, you're gaining strokes on most people on this course. And Pete's third shot gets hung up. Still should be able to get up and down, hopefully save the bogey from there. Trying to play that high right side to bring it down. Brinster liked the shot. And Steve here, prime position, plenty of power for from him to go after this. Still difficult to execute, but that's a really good shot for Brinster. KJ looking to follow suit. KJ with a slightly easier angle, able to put that on a hyzer, kind of ride, let the hill kind of slow it down. If he comes to the hillside, he can kind of just skip to the pin, slide down the hill to it. Nice straight shot by Pete. So he'll have that putt left for his bogey attempt. Brinster. Looks to be just outside the circle. This is at least double, if not triple, the previous hole where he had the birdie look. Oh, and that one's solid. Brinster. Nice work. Great birdie to answer with here on 11. As I said, third most difficult hole on the course. i even spoil it a little and say there hasn't been a birdie before this card. So Brinster, the first one of the day, can Shasta double it up? No, right side. And you hear the frustration. On the previous hole, he was high left side. This time, right side and out. Brinster's brought it to within one of KJ. KJ answers with a birdie of his own. These two gentlemen, Brinster and Naibo, the only two in the field to get the birdie. So if you want to talk about exclusive bonus content, I mean, come on. You just saw the only two people birdie it. Oh, no. Pete. Hole 11. Taking a massive bite out of his scorecard. And they're going to move over to hole 12. The last one on this side of the road. That is brutal. 
12. Kind of clear the water and the deep side gunite here. OB short and left of the pin. Somehow, if you could ever get to that sidewalk deep, I don't think we've ever really seen that. That would require about a 475 foot, almost a 500 foot effort to get there. I've seen people play safe, but never gone deep enough to find the deep side sidewalk. And this looks like a conservative play by KJ. That's actually way off to the right side, even out of view. And it finally comes to rest. And although he didn't like it, it has a similar result to what we saw from KJ. Right side, likely layup zone. Well, different play here from Shasta. Just didn't turn it enough, so when that started to flex back, no chance of getting up and over. So he moves directly to the drop zone from here. And this is going right at the pin, but it needs to slow down. And it doesn't. Ouch. Double OBs here for Pete. Shasta just looking to play this for par. You got to love it when a game plan works out. Playing conservative, playing for the par. There's no worse feeling in the world than laying something up and then ultimately having it come back to bite you or you don't execute it fully. So that's got to be a little bit of a confidence boost. I know that sounds crazy, but it's got to be a confidence boost for Shasta. See a couple of layups. Not really in a position you can even think about running it. Pete now, who's had the double OB. Gets that one to drop. Again, going to take a bite out of his scorecard. Really frustrating, I'm sure, for Pete. AJ jams it in. Just three birdies on this hole from the Masters division. Now, all divisions trimmed down during this final round. Shast is in. Yesterday, we saw some brutal action here on 12. Steve Brinster's putt got spit back out from short range. Long walk then that leads us over to hole 13. We're going to go up and over the sh shorter basket here that's played in a different configuration. If you came out here and played casually, we go to the long basket. Very much a bonus birdie get. Hole 13 plays as the fourth most difficult hole on the course. Averaging almost a half a stroke over par. Thank you. If you're going to get the birdie, that's the more common way to get there is to play some wide hyzer out to that right-hand side. You can go right up the middle. It just requires much more of a line drive. Shasta playing high and wide, but that's going to put him in layup territory. 
That's true. Not sure what event that was, but I think I maybe even referred to some of that as the friend zone. Not really a place to be aggressive. <laughs> I have to t take it easy. Same for Pete. I mean, the, the basket sits 12, maybe 12 feet short of the water. So just absolutely no consideration whatsoever to give this any kind of an aggressive bid. I like the shot by Shasta. He came up short, let it skip to the pin. It still went a few feet past. Even Brinster, same idea. That's just not a territory. If you're not at circle's edge at least, and you see that KJ sitting at 12 meters and not even thinking about it. If you're not at circle's edge and super confident with your putt, you're likely not running this. Pete here, who's been bleeding strokes back on 11 and 12. No time for laying up as he's going to walk away with a par. In fact, zero birdies given up here on hole number 13. If I recall, there might have been zero birdies on hole number 13 during round number three as well. I'm master's age, don't, don't challenge my memory. Plus, are you guys even listening? I just kind of randomly make up stuff, talk to myself, middle of the night, middle of winter. Glad you're along for the ride. Looks like an Arizona party to me. Stop in at the 19th hole, Duke Sports Bar and Grill. Get yourself a chicken cordon blue sandwich. All right, heading over to 14, 655 feet. There's a mandatory both on the left side when you get started and then also late on the right side, I'm trying to keep you away from the sidewalk and, of course, an elevated pin. KJ, two-stroke advantage over Brinster. <laughs> Just about... Just about as he says, he's going to be safe. I hear a little bit of wind picking up as well. I mean, if we're being picky, you'd love that 20, maybe 30 feet to the left. But that's a solid drive all day there by Steve Brinster. Asking for the big skip, same idea. As a righty backhand thrower, you, you want to be left center of fairway. Dead straight with the basket is going to require just that, a straight shot. If you can throw it like this, uh, except for getting through, but you want to really push a little bit to the left just so you have a gentle hyzer angle to the basket. Pete pulls that one way off to the right side. Spicy boy trying to track it down. Big shout out to him hustling around, able to give us this bonus content. Arizona native. And here's what I'm saying is if we're being picky, you'd love to be this, this distance, but on the left side of the fairway. Steve's gonna have to bend this just a little bit. And it looks like he's pulled over on it way too much. And that's gonna keep him significantly short of the pin. Now, of course, if you've got a solid forehand, maybe this is a perfectly fine spot to be. And it appears to be the case for KJ. And off in the distance, we've got more cameras out there filming 
the MPO lead card. Of course, that's all right here in the same playlist. A couple of clicks on the YouTubes, you'll find it all. Great concentration by Shasta. Lots of movement in the background and didn't appear to phase him. Just not enough. He needed about two more inches of power there. Can power be measured in inches? I don't know. I'm going to... And that conversation right about now. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Backside. I don't know if that's a rail slide. I don't know. I'm not a skateboarder if that's not obvious, but <laughs> what a shot. Somehow that stays in for KJ, and he's going to extend his lead to three. Oh, and the showman. Nobody does it like Pete. Hi, I'm Andrew Marweed, and for the last three years, I've been one of the top putters in the world. I chose the DGA Steady for its straight, consistent flight path and the confidence it gives me on the green. Plus, it comes in both beaded and beadless versions with a wide variety of plastics. I prefer the Stone Steady BL. You can find your Steady at discgolf.com. Big shout out to our friends at DGA. Along with our presenting sponsors here of the event, of course, being Discraft for decades now. KJ Naibo. Big pull here on 15. One of the longest holes on the course. Par 4. A couple of mandatories. You have OB on both the left and right sides. And then when you get near the pin, you've got OB deep of the basket. And the roller is pushing up on the right side. It's going to come back into frame there. Could have maybe done without the rollback, but it'll still work. It's in the middle. Here's Shasta going with the roller as well, but that's pushing up to that right side, just hoping it doesn't fall through one of the slits in the fence. So he'll be short and probably have awkward footing on that high right side. And Pete's going to hang this out much wider. Doesn't necessarily need to watch it. He knows where it's heading. Also up to that high right side. So him and Shasta will be in similar territory. Pete with a lot more distance. Shasta's second shot. From that high right side. And that's going to put him in the neighborhood of, uh, of just laying up, probably. Got a couple of trees that guard the basket. You don't want to bring those into play on a, on a possibly on a third putt. That would have been good. <laughs> if it weren't for that tree, that would have been good. Pete releases that low and really, I'm going to say squandering the opportunity. What a great tee shot, but the throw it low and right into the ground. Likely taking his birdie opportunity away. Meanwhile, Steve Brinster is going to need to pick something up here on KJ. And you need to beat that tree, and he'll have a look from right around Circle's Edge. Oh, 
what may feel like a disappointing par look that Pete has left as KJ just trying to bend it around. Shasta not feeling like he was fully committed on that. You see a little frustration afterwards. This is Brinster for birdie to get to 21 under. I feel like he stole my word there. See him swipe up with frustration there. He's going to not pick up a stroke on Naibo, which... Can make his battle that much tougher. Uphill, down three with just 16, 17, and 18 to play. Now we know how dangerous really all three of these holes can be. There's OB on all three holes that remain. 18's got the Mandos. 17, you can easily slide out of bounds, even though it feels like a birdie hole. Just three left to play. So we said 119 meters, hole number 16, 390 feet. Very much a bonus get here on the XL layout. Seen multiple OBs slide left, finding the sidewalk. Also very easy to hit the basket and roll away on a putt that doesn't find the bottom of the basket or the chains. Heck, I've seen chains, basket, then still roll out of bounds. I've seen it all. 16 has ended the hopes and dreams of a few Memorial Champion contenders. Brinster, hillside, he'll have a look for birdie. One could say there's almost an advantage to being out on this hole if you're playing and very close with one of your competitors because you can kind of see what they're doing or have done in terms of if you want to run it or if you see somebody hit, possibly roll down the hill or hit and even worse, go out of bounds. It doesn't necessarily, if you're not right next to the basket, there's nothing wrong with having to go second in my opinion on this particular hole. Steve, though, will be acting first, and this isn't a high percentage territory for most putters. He does give it a good bid, though. And w exactly what I'm saying by that is now, KJ has, if he's at all in a testy territory, he can find himself playing much more conservative, and that's exactly where he is right now. He's sitting on a three-stroke lead with just two holes to play. There is no reason for him to run after that. He's going to rely on a three-stroke advantage with two left. If he's up one, maybe he feels a little differently, but three strokes with two to play. He'll likely take those chances, and Brinster's going to get up and down, take the par. And really the other pro tip to what we just saw from KJ, he, they had no chance of hitting the pole, no chance of hitting the basket. He was just throwing it into the hillside nice and flat, letting it skip to the basket. If you're going to lay up, stay fully committed to a layup. The worst thing you can do is throw it too hard, and all of a sudden it hits the pole or even worse, hits the basket and then rolls away on you. Stay fully committed. Shasta in for the par. Kind of what you expect here on hole number 16. 
as I said earlier, feels like a bonus birdie. If you need to ship any diss to anyone around the country or even international, maybe you're shipping something to KJ to have him sign it over there in Denmark. You can use my disc in a box. I sell them in a hundred case cartons. Reach out to me. I also carry two mil and four mil bags to keep your disc protected. And you slide it into the box, my disc in a box. Protect those valuables. KJ trying to make light work of 17. See a little left to right win, so that should aid in the forehand here. We don't see a lot of forehands out of Brinster. That's not an ace run. <laughs> and Brinster very aware of exactly the scenario. He knows he's down three, needing an ace or something magical probably here on 17 to even give him a chance. Because you can play 18 very conservative if you'd like. And you'd love to be in that position to do just that. And that flips over for Pete. That's going to leave him with a long putt. Here's Brinster for birdie. He's going to need this. And that may be the realization, uh, barring something catastrophic. Brinster looking to go four back of Naibo, assuming KJ can convert. And you see the bid and the go by Pete, but doesn't get that to fall. So there's the question for you guys, though, is when are you getting out to the Memorial? Coming out to Arizona for some disc golf at this point in the season. In 2022, we're feeling some uh, pretty nasty weather and conditions as this was released. Clearly in Arizona, whether it's January for the Shelly Sharp, whether it's the Maricopa Open, whether it's the... Memorial, you should be probably getting down to Arizona. So when are you going to get to Arizona and play golf? That's what I want to know. Put it in the comments. Maybe you go there regularly. Tell me that. Whatever the case is, make sure you're taking in some Arizona disc golf. No. Oh, Pete's short-range putt. And we just said the wind is blowing left to right. How in the world that came out? is beyond me as you see Shasta tentatively putting in for birdie. And Pete's putt from short range kind of feels like what we saw from Brinster yesterday. We talked about this earlier. This was Brinster's birdie look on 12. This is the Simma Down replay brought to you by shop.thediscgolfguy.com. And that was even shorter that that somehow bounced back out. So... I hate to rub salt in the Rick of Runes there, but don't take anything for granted. We move into 18, 381 feet, 116 meters. Got the double mandos on that right side. You have to be left of both of them. And, of course, OB left and water. With that, KJ's got a four-stroke lead going into the final hole. There's a couple philosophies. Of course, he could play it safe here and just try and pitch over. Play for the par, recognizing that a birdie doesn't really hurt him by Steve. Or you go deep like that. And he's still going to have a look to save par from there. I, I don't mind that philosophy if that's what he was thinking there is... Go after the pin. If you miss it, you're still going to have a look to save part. Worst case scenario, you lay up under the basket and you tap in for bogey. That brings him to 22 under. That means Brinster needs to ace. Well, 
Wow, and we saw Shasta peg that right side Mando during round three today, all but parking it. Brinster needs nothing short of an ace here. Four, 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 up high. And that's going to be wide right. Nice. <laughs> OB and or missing the Mando. I, I think there'll be a, probably a conversation about that as they had in round three. But either way, penalty stroke coming. And that effectively will end it for Steve. And that makes the Mando no problem for Pete. Brinster goes to the drop zone. And really at this point, he's, he's not thinking about any longer catching KJ. He's just trying to make sure he secures his second place positioning. Pete pitching right up. Looks like a par in line. Now KJ will get his spot. KJ could just lay this up under the basket. There would be no harm in that. Doesn't look like he's doing such. Oh, and a great putt to finish out. Your champion here at the 2022 Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. Your MP40 champion, KJ Naibo out of Denmark. Congratulations. Shasta sitting comfortably right now in third. Make or miss there doesn't really matter. Except for a solid closeout, birdieing 17 and 18. But Shasta, Chris, will finish in third place, shooting a three under on today's round. As I said, back-to-back -back birdies to close out the tournament. This is Brinster for his bogey. So Brinster's going to finish with a double. And it was so much closer than it really, I feel like the scores showed, of course, giving up a number of strokes in the last couple of holes. But Arizona's own Pete finishing in fourth place at 12 under, three ahead of Craig Cutler. And again, K.J. Naibo, the MP40 champion here. This is his first win at the Memorial, coming all the way from Denmark. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks to Spicy Boy. And with that, we're going to close it out. We appreciate each and every one of you, especially the Patreon subscribers. Couldn't do it without you. Hope you enjoyed all the coverage bonus action, off-season, whatever you want to call it. We'll see you in 2023 for the Memorial.